Katie, I think I first came across your work when you spoke at NatCon, like before last, maybe, was it NatCon in Miami? Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago. And you gave a speech um, about your organization then before us and and the sort of guiding philosophy of your organization. And I had a, I think I had at least two friends send this speech to me, the, the text of it and say like, this is amazing. You have to read this. And I read it and I said, yeah, this is amazing. And I sent it to, to like several other people um, because, you know, I, I'm sure we'll get into this over the course of the conversation. There are, there are some policy points on which I think we disagree, but I just found the whole framing of it so startling and so effective. Um, could you just, without, obviously, I think people should just go and read it, obviously, but without wanting to sort of recite the whole speech from memory or anything like that just just go through the kind of the building blocks of your argument the point where you start from in the argument at the very beginning and where you go from there the natcon speech is the only one i've ever written out word for word normally i kind of do an outline and then just you know let the the room the feel of the room kind of fill in the details but that one i was like you know what i'm going to script every single word that i'm saying Um, And so it followed the framework that we generally use for all of our work, which is we begin with the child. So many of the issues and conversations and policy discussions that we're having when it comes to marriage and family, I'd say almost all of them begin with the adults. What do the adults want? What do the adults need? What have adults traditionally had access to? And so we try to reframe everything that we do from the position of what about the child, right? So we we begin with the child and this has a lot of advantages to it. Um, But, uh, you know, a lot of advantages in that it's sort of a seamless garment of, of child defense. You can take these principles and apply it to every marriage and family question and come out with a policy that is going to protect the most vulnerable among us. Um, It's non-hypocritical, like everybody has to bend to these child centric ideals, but I tell people, It also means that at some point I'm going to piss you off because it makes demands of all adults. So the the speech in essence began with we have forgotten the reason why we're getting all these questions wrong about marriage and family, beginning with the definition of marriage, which is such a softball when it comes to what should we do in this area? The reason we get that wrong is because we have forgotten who children are and what they need. So the speech began with let's talk about what a child is. And I kind of referred to the Vince Lombardi famous, like this is a football. You guys absolutely blew what should have been an easy win. Don't come back to me saying, hey, let's work on new plays. You guys have to rediscover the fundamentals of the game. So that was what the speech kind of um, followed, that pattern it followed. This is a child. This child comes from a man and woman. Like only those two people are the ones that are going to be able to maximize the child's Um, chances of being safe and loved because social science has told us that unrelated adults are not as connected to, invested in, and protective of them. This is a child. It's only those two people that gave her life that can grant her access to her biological identity. And children who don't have access to that biological identity tend to struggle in these ways. This is a child. She needs both halves of humanity represented in her home to maximize her development. Dads tend to emphasize and help children hone their gross motor skills and their cognitive development in ways that moms don't. Moms tend to emphasize fine motor skill development and talk to children right at their level. Dads tend to have more rough and aggressive play, which teaches them boundaries and limits. Moms tend to focus more on equity, which helps children to know how to relate to others better, right? This is a child. Like if that is true about children, then marriage is a matter of justice because it's the only relationship that unites the two people to whom children have a natural right and maximizes the likelihood that they are genuinely going to thrive. This is a child. If this child is who she says that she is, that means that we need to discourage divorce, except in extreme cases. That means that we should be against all third-party reproductive technologies that separate children from one of these two adults at the moment of conception. That means that we need to reject surrogacy, which always insist that children lose a bond with the only person they know at the moment that they are born. This is a child. She cannot advocate for herself. She doesn't blog. She can't hire lawyers. She can't submit amicus briefs. It is up to us to represent her rights. This is a child. When we get questions about marriage and family wrong, she is the victim. 
not the adults who aren't getting what they want or being validated in some way, when we get these questions wrong, her life is genuinely harmed. So, you know, this is a child and a just society is always going to insist that the strong sacrifice for the weak and not the other way around and children are weak. They need to be defended. So it kind of in a 15 minute time frame captured our message, which is all adults should sacrifice for children and our method, which is to be child centric and story led to really highlight the stories of kids who are impacted by these damaging laws, cultural ideas, and policies so that you can look these kids in the face themselves and you're not able to dismiss the kind of suffering they endure through these vacuous phrases like, if the adults are happy, the kids will be happy, or love makes a family. Um, like you have to look them in the face and recognize the harm that they experience when they have to suffer through mother and father loss, usually because adult desires are prioritized above their fundamental rights and needs. So that's probably more than you needed overview on that speech. Mm -hmm.